Hello viewers, uh, welcome to another episode of Uncovering India. December 4 is celebrated as Navy Day across the country to observe the operations uh, led by the Indian Navy for its Operation Trident, which was uh, undertaken to attack the Karachi Harbour in the, during the 4th of December 1971. And this action not only uh, took the enemy by surprise but also broke their back and which was instrumental in India's victory over Pakistan in the 1971 war. However, the military operations or military role is not limited to uh, war or battle only. They play a very important role in aiding the civilian population as well. And today we are here to discuss the role played by the Goa Naval Area in aid of the civilian population for the last many years it has been here. And uh, to speak more about it, we have the Flag Officer Commanding of Goa Naval Area, Rear Admiral Filipos with us. Under whose tenure, we have seen how the Goa Naval Area has been in forefront in aiding the civilian population uh, for flood relief operations as well as uh, carrying the uh, suspected COVID samples to Pune for uh, testing when Goa didn't have its own lab. So welcome sir uh, for in this interaction. So before we start, uh, heartiest congratulations uh, to you for the wonderful work uh, Goa Naval Area has been doing for so many years and also under your tenure. So uh, first tell me, uh, what brought you to the Navy fraternity? What made me join the Navy? Okay. So I, I come from an internet defense background. My late father was an air marshal with a fighter pilot in the Air Force. And uh, my elder brother, five years ago, today was no more. So he, he was a pilot in the Navy. My sister is married to Brigade Air. So my entire family is in defense forces. So from as far back as I can remember, I was very clear that I was going to join the armed forces. So, uh, all these years that you have been in Navy, uh, how do you look back at your career till now? Uh, how do you look back at your life here? It's been uh, exceptional. I spent about 35 years and uh, in a variety of jobs. I mean, that's, that's the best part of the Navy. The, the sheer uh, variety of jobs that one can, or responsibilities one can undertake. I had the opportunity to command three ships. I was executive officer, second commander, destroyer, commander an air squadron, and an air station. And uh, the icing on the cake was the current job, which, I'm, which I thoroughly enjoy. And it's satisfying. And uh, there are more ways than one. It's, it's, it's a very really nice it's a, it's a assignment. So you are holding a dual position of flag officer in Goa area and flag officer in uh, naval aviation. Yes. So, what is FOGA and what is FONA? Can you please elaborate more on what is your role? Flag Officer Goa area is essentially the area commander of the Navy in Goa. So, that is all the various establishments which are positioned in Goa are under me. That includes a variety of establishments ranging from an air base to an armament depot to an underwater range and various other things, a store depot and various things a support base and uh, so on. So all these establishments are under me in my avatar as the flag of Sabo area. In addition, I am the flag of the aviation. So essentially the officer who holds this billet has to be from the aviation side. He has to be a pilot or an observer because he has to do these two jobs. So as flag of the naval aviation, I am responsible for the 250 odd aircraft of the fighters helicopters and maritime reconnaissance aircraft which the Navy has. These are uh, looked after by two rear admirals. One is the assistant chief of naval staff air who sits in Delhi, that was my previous job, and the flag officer naval aviation who is at war. So uh, the FONA has staff to assist him to ensure that the uh, various types of aircraft which we have which operate from the nine air bases spread all across the country, including three bases which are in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. We have to ensure that they operate safely, efficiently, and are capable of delivering the, what the Navy or nation uh, expects from these aircraft and the air crew and technical officers as FONA to ensure 
that this uh, happens. And uh, including the maintenance of the aircraft, the proficiency of the aircraft, ensuring that spares reach the aircraft in time. And uh, we, all missions are met expeditiously and safely. So, uh, how challenging it has been for you, uh, for a FOGA to have the FOGA on one side and FOGA on one side, and your ships on the other side, and the aviation on the other side? How challenging is this uh, dual uh, charge that one has to perform? It's, it's an extremely busy job, it's extremely satisfying and a very hands on sort of job. There's a lot of interaction with uh, the men and women on the field, which I, I find extremely satisfying. I get the chance to fly. My sense, I do regularly. So you, you have a finger on the pulse and you keep traveling across the various air stations, the store depots, the, the maintenance facilities. So I, I find that extremely satisfying. So uh, your uh, the war naval area has been in the forefront of uh, aiding the civilian population, be it the Operation Varshara or be it the COVID outbreak. And, Doni aircraft were taking the samples to uh, Pune and back. So, uh, how do you uh, take on these kind of challenges, the civilian challenges that erupt? So, uh, what kind of approach or plan that uh, you have uh, to coordinate so much of resources in such wide kind of uh, duties that you are going to take? Yeah, the, the, the main the strong point of tenet of air power or any aviation asset is flexibility. So we have a variety of types of aircraft ranging from a Boeing 737 which operates from Harpur to the small Chetak helicopter to the Donias. So based on the challenge one uh, assigns the perfect aircraft for the task. Like for example, you talked about Opera. So there were certain outlying areas which were cut off totally where uh, the, the road connection wasn't there. Like for example, Kulab. So we sent a Dolly aircraft. We needed a small aircraft which could land on the, uh, the airstrip, which is quite small over there. So the first thing to reach there was a naval team of divers along with the relief material. So we, we uh, set up a logistic chain there with several aircraft and helicopters proceeding there. And uh, besides uh, the opera uh, of Bashar Rawat, which happened last year, year before last was the op mother, which happened in Cochin. In, in Kerala. So there again, uh, the assets from Guwahati have gone across to assist in the operations over there. And during COVID time, also in your uh, base, have played a very important role. And same Dolly aircraft when you exactly. take the samples there. So can you please elaborate on So we, we have a very close relationship with the state government and all uh, the, uh, the the concerned. Secretaries are extremely helpful and cooperative, and we are in constant touch, especially from the health secretaries inside. We were actually on a one to one, uh, Mrs. Mila Mohan was the, the person there at that time. And uh, whenever there was a requirement, they would reach out to the Navy, and it was two ways. There were several occasions when we sought there for testing our personnel, because you would, you would understand that when you're deploying a personnel with ships or aircraft, you can't afford to have COVID positive person go on board and spread the COVID in these restricted spaces. So I, I wouldn't say that it was a one way, I think that only we were helping state down, it was both ways. But uh, initially what you likely brought out was the, we didn't have the testing facility in Goa. So we took uh, several hundred of, of samples on many occasions to Pune, and then we brought teams from Pune to train our personnel, uh, the state government doctors over here and now uh, and that happened really fast thanks to the efficiency of the medical staff at GMC and all and uh, the state had this machinery up and running in no time and uh, it's, it's, it's a really good uh, relationship and uh, whenever we need help also the uh, state government is more than uh, willing to help us. So under your tenure uh, last year of the independent and the independent say 2020 the five uh, gallantry awards that were announced for the Navy, three were won by uh, your team only uh, at AMSA for the incident that you mentioned. Uh, including one, the aircraft that was awarded by uh, your great pilot, Captain uh, Sukhan. Uh, so, how does it feel uh, getting uh, this gallantry award for civilian aid in, uh, during your duration? It's, it's a matter of great pride and actually there were four 
towards the end, out of which three were from uh, Goa as directly brought out. But I would like to stress that uh, any military member, it's Army, Navy, or Air Force, two, but one goes into any job, whether it's a dangerous job or uh, with a A to civil power, it, it's not with the intent of uh, getting any recognition. So it, it, it's, just, uh, it's a matter of pride for us that these three officers were, uh, two officers and an and air crew diver were recognized for their efforts. So the two of uh, one ALS pilot and a diver uh, were awarded for their contribution to Varshara, the, uh, the air to civil power exercise. And one was, as you brought out, uh, there was an unfortunate crash of the week where the pilot got the quantity uh, due to uh, a massive uh, bird hit, I mean, a group of birds which the aircraft had encountered. He pointed the aircraft in a safe direction to ensure that there was no loss of property or life and uh, ejected, so for which he was awarded. Goa is called the Mecca of naval aviation. What do you have to say about it? Yeah, so, so the uh, maximum number of aircraft are based in Goa. So we have some 45 MiGs, we have IL-38s, advanced light helicopters, Alouettes, Kamov 31s, about five, uh, six different types of aircraft based here, and a huge number of aircraft as well as the naval aircraft yard and uh, the uh, headquarters naval aviation over here. So, uh, from that point of view, uh, this is uh, the global mecca of naval aviation. So, speaking about uh, interaction with the civil population, like we had this body incident, uh, garbage uh, menace outside the airport premises, the rampant construction issues that are there, uh, which is always in the news, uh, the, there's always the perception that Navy doesn't allow construction to happen, whereas there are certain regulations in place, how to go about things. So, how do you want to, like, to clear this air? So, what role does Navy play in terms of allowing construction around the air base and what is the process? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me this question. So, we happen to be the airport operating authority. So, worldwide, whoever operates an airport has to stringently ensure that certain norms for construction are followed. So it, now we are painted as people who restrict building, it's not so. So the, the point is anyone who wanted to construct a building sends in an application which is routed through the Navy and a joint team from the airbase as well as the person undertaking the construction goes to the site and they measure the precise decision uh, distance from the touchdown point. And, uh, and then it's determined as to what height the building can be constructed uh, up to. So, to elaborate, like for example, you have a new airport in Mopa, which is coming up, and that will be operated by the airport authority of India. So, the clearance for buildings will be by the airport authority of India. So, it will not be by the Navy around Mopa. So, so, it's a very uh, normal sort of thing. So, uh, the main area is the approach funnel, where there's the maximum restriction. And as you divert, I mean, they diverge from the funnel, it becomes less restrictive when you can have higher buildings. So, there are a lot of misconceptions, like in the press, it will come out that they are not even permitting a storm shelter and various things, which is actually kind of unfair because uh, just because a building is a storm shelter, uh, and it doesn't mean that it will be less harmful to an aircraft which coming to land. So, uh, I think it's kind of unfair that uh, the Navy is pointed out to be restrictive of development or something, which is absolutely not the case. So, you have those color-coded maps also, uh, okay. which are in place. So, you can uh, elaborate a little yeah. more on those color-coded so maps. So, this one of the few airfields all over India which ties to the efforts of my team and with uh, lots of help from the uh, NPDA, the, the Builders Association and their architects and uh, the experts there, we came up with a color-coded zoning map which, they, like, if you go online and go onto this color coded zoning map, it will immediately tell you what height of the building can be constructed at what point. So, when you click on a point, it will tell you uh, up to what height it's permitted. And then there are color zones which indicate the same. So, the more restrictive zones are red, and there are different colors as you go away from the uh, funnel, approach funnel. And so. So, I believe uh, you have the plans to place one IL-38 uh, aircraft at Panjim and uh, the Oxford Tourism Department also and so on. So, what is this uh, plan about? Okay. Thank you for the question. 
This, uh, I think it is an illusion 38, which is one of the first maritime reconnaissance aircraft which the Navy operated from the 70s. So these aircraft are close to 40 years old, the illusion 38. It's almost as big as a Boeing 737. It's a very impressive looking aircraft. And now, as we are, it's the 40th year, these, we started with five aircraft and two have already been uh, decommissioned. So we are in talks with the state government and they are uh, very positive about uh, setting up one of these the aircraft at Panjim, near the Panjim Circle, close to the bridge, near the, on the river bank, to set it up as a kind of aviation museum. So we are going to follow the same model as was done at Vishakhapatnam, uh, where they have a Tupolev 142, a TU 142 museum, which is a huge success. They, they've had, uh, in the last uh, four years, they've had uh, literally millions of footfalls. And uh, even whatever uh, the state government had invested in this project, they got back in literally in, in one year. So the tourists are allowed to enter the aircraft and there are mannequins placed at each of the two stations. And you get a really good uh, feel of how it is to, to fly in that aircraft. And also there are various other things like a simulator and various restaurants and uh, whatever is required for tourists. So I, I think it will be a big hit. And, uh, this, uh, Goa being a tourist hub, we are eagerly looking forward to ensuring this happens. You know, Navy Week is on the corner, the 4th of December celebrated as the Navy Day, as we all know, and then meetings in Navy Day celebrations, Navy Week celebrations. So, there are a lot of restrictions this time due to COVID. So, now anything, this year are you planning anything special for uh, Navy Week celebrations? No, actually, we are very disappointed that uh, we, we uh, are unable to celebrate Navy, Navy Day and Navy Week in the, in the usual uh, in the fervor which we have every year and where we reach out to the public and uh, would like to display what we do on a day to day basis and attract the youth to join the Navy. Unfortunately, those activities are absolutely low-key uh, this year and many are in the, in the form of virtual events. Like there are some exciting uh, things which are being done uh, from Mumbai, we become under, under the Western Naval Command. So there is a virtual tour of the aircraft carrier Vikramaditya, and there is a virtual tour of uh, Mysore, Hainas Mysore, which is our top uh, destroyer, indigenous, uh, indigenously built destroyer. And then there are various webinars on the Navy as a way of life, etc. So which can be accessed by anyone uh, countrywide. And uh, as far as Goa is concerned, we, have, we normally have a whole string of events. There's a, Reception was meeting retreat uh, hosted by the Navy, which the governor and chief minister have been attending, and we've always been looking forward to hosting the popular at these events. Unfortunately, that will not be held. We've been having a band concert, which again would not be held. So, as of now, we are low key, we are doing some virtual events, and we have a really nice naval aviation museum, which is on the way to Bogmaro Beach. So, we've, we've got uh, some uh, visits planned on uh, 4th of December for school children, and which we, uh, ensuring the COVID precautions we will uh, ensure that kids have a great time there. And talking about the Naval Aviation Museum, there's a plans afoot to bring it up to world class standards. And uh, I would urge all the uh, ones as well as tourists who come here to make that a part of their itinerary. Mm -hmm. We have more than 30 aircraft there. And uh, towards that, I am going to institute a, a two days a month where uh, underprivileged children can enter free. So we are in uh, touch with state government to uh, reach out to these schools and uh, we can organize uh, tours for these children. And we, we really look forward to it. In fact, the museum got recent recognition also. That's correct. Thank you very much. The Supreme Advisor give them an award of sorts. It's one of the Place to see in Goa. So that actually encouraged us, and uh, we are actually taking it to the next level. There's a beautiful audiovisual uh, center over there where we keep screening HD movies, high definition movies on all the aviation activities. So I would urge all the viewers to visit this museum. So before we conclude, uh, your final thoughts, your appeal, or anything that you would like to tell our viewers regarding the role of uh, Go on, 
other plans that you have in your mind for the next year? Well, thank you for your question. And I would like to mention that I have never been posted to Goa before. So I'm one of the, I'm the only, if I was a Goa area, to have joined Goa on his very first tenure. Because uh, the helicopter I fly is not based on Goa, it's based on Bombay and Kochi. So as a result, I never got a chance to serve in Goa. But in this tenure, I've, I've realized that uh, Goa is the best place to work in and the best place to stay in. And as a place, it's like heaven on earth and uh, we have the best people, the most friendly people. So I've grown to really love this uh, place. And I have a lot of plans to... I mean, there have been a lot of occasions where we could reach out to the public and uh, we, we've got a lot of programs with the Villa Institute of Technology and the various academic institutions as well as school children and we try to reach out to the villages nearby. We have uh, various schemes with the old age home as well as certain orphanages. And we, we hope to continue these efforts further. We've had several blood donation camps over the year and uh, as of now we're planning a plasma donation camp in conjunction with the GMC. So uh, we hope to continue these efforts and uh, we, I, I'm sure we'll get over COVID and uh, we can have even more activities with the uh, populace over here and we hope to iron out whatever perceived differences are there. And uh, one appeal I would have to the, the youngsters of Goa, I am uh, kind of disappointed that the numbers of Goans in the Navy is very low. So I think it's due to uh, lack of knowledge of what a great life one can have in the Navy. So I would, I would like to appeal to the youngsters to, uh, I, mean, we, I mean, we'd like to reach out to you, we'd like to organize visits to our airbase or have lectures in your schools and colleges, which we are already doing with maybe we should do it at a larger extent. Because being a coastal state and with uh, seafaring being in your blood, I think we should see more Goan girls and uh, boys joining the armed forces for a, a, a lifetime of uh, um, the most satisfying job which one can have, the most satisfying, most exciting job which one can have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for taking out your precious time to talk to us and uh, we fully uh, appreciate your thoughts and uh, wish you all the best for your future endeavors. So as you all uh, heard uh, Rear Admiral Philippos, the flag officer in Goa Naval Area himself, uh, talking about how uh, the uh, Goa Naval Area has been in the forefront of supporting the civilian population apart from discharging its military duties. And the appeal is very strong that the Goans should come forward and uh, join the Indian Navy and uh, serve the country. And uh, we are looking forward for a greater involvement of Goa Naval Area in tandem working with the not only the state government but also the people of Goa. This is Shashwat Gupta Ray along with Pranali Rupwate uh, signing off for Uncovering India. Thank you.